Outside Interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you from a sunny San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Vince Sor Shorb, who is in a even hotter, I would say, Dallas, Texas. How are you doing, Vince? A little warm out here, but doing good with the AC. Good to be on your show. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And Vince is one of the country's leading advocates for promoting financial wellness and creating partnerships with financial service providers that increase access to financial education programming among uh, individuals, while also helping financial services business build clientele. After 15 years in financial services, working one-on-one -on -one with more than 20,000 people, Vince founded the National Finance Educators Council, an organization dedicated to com combating the financial literacy epidemic. And we're going to talk today about how making a, a difference can drive success. But just to start with, um, Vince, just tell me about the, 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 National, the, the National Financial Educators Council, um, because I think you're right. I mean, I think financial literacy has always kind of been a problem. I think now it's even bigger because let's face it. I mean, you even have things now that people who would consider themselves financial literate don't understand anymore. You know, you've got crypto and you've got all these other things. Um, but just, just give us just a brief outline of, of how you came to found this and why. Yeah, I've always had an interest in money and I always remember being frustrated in school in the back of the class reading about real estate, investing, and other things. I had an interest in starting businesses. Um, and I expressed this frustration pretty much daily to my parents on wishing I was learning something I can use. And so I got into the financial services industry after a few mistakes on my own part coming out of high school, going into college, student loan debt, credit card, you know the, the story you hear it time and time again. And I went into financial services to help people, right? So I was in the mortgage, I was in the stock industry, and I, I, I did these different roles, but it kept coming back to issues with people didn't know the basics about finances. And then I had a great conversation with my mom when I was like, I don't know what I want to do. I'm not satisfied here. And she reminded me, she said, I remember you always coming home, being upset of what they were teaching in school. And so we founded this uh, organization, National Financial Educators Council, uh, going on two decades ago, about 18 years uh, ago. And uh, our focus is really getting financial education to all ages, but kids, teens, adults, um, promoting this through advocacy campaigns, really trying to get parents and schools involved, and also helping our partners, which typically are in financial services, but it can range from corporations and other groups that want to bring financial education in. And that brings us to talking together here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I, I love it because let's face it, um, there's 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 a lot more ways you can get into financial difficulty nowadays than there ever was. I mean, yeah. thankfully, we, you know, we have so many, so many different options and ways that, as I said, financial literacy is becoming, I would say, even even more important. Um, so, so uh, how do you then work with organizations, and then how do you how do you help and advise people how they can use their organization, as you said, drive business by um, making a difference? And what does making a difference mean? Yeah, for us, making a difference means measurable outcomes on people's financial uh, outcomes, right? Yeah. Not only their test scores, their knowledge, but also, hey, are they working toward greater financial wellness? That's what it means to us. We tackle this on a community by community basis. And there's other groups, you know, so we typically serve financial services because there's alignment with brands. So a financial advisor, a bank, a realtor, they're in the same industry, their financial wellness, they just provide services where we're providing education. So we serve a lot of those because there's brand alignment and they're looking to connect with a brand. But I know your audience is very diverse. They come from a lot of different industries here. And so what I always tell people is find that audience that aligns with your brand uh, and, and start to build you know, a, a cause related mission aligned with your, your business. I think it helps in, in many ways. Um, and I think the brand alignment is very much key. So if you have a sporting goods store, right, yeah. you may not want to sponsor a, um, uh, you know, a, a fashion contest, right? right? That might be outside. It just doesn't make sense. Or if you're mm -hmm. a realtor, you may not want to, you know, be trying to save the, uh, uh, you know, 
uh, little otters in, in Amazon rainforest. You could do that personally, but sure. it doesn't match that brand. So I always tell people the first thing, whatever industry you're in, is find causes that align with their brand, and that's going to be a, a good start forward for you. Yeah, and I think what you outlined there is 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 very interesting because if you think from if you, you know, say with you in the financial services, right? Let's face it, we always have a little bit of suspicion about banks and financial service and institutions. We always feel like you know because they send us these pages and pages of stuff that we're never going to read. Um, we always feel like they're probably pulling the wool over our eyes a little bit, but. Where what you're doing there by partnering with them and then saying them saying here let us help educate you and get you more financial savvy that's more trust building. Exactly right. That trust is key, especially when it comes to the uh, services that require higher trust. Maybe a bank opening a checking account that might be a lower sure. trust, but when you're getting into investments, buying a home, that's a very high trust. And so building that trust through value alignment, in addition when they're positioned as an educator. And this really goes to all salespeople mm -hmm. too. I come from the sales background. I still do it on a daily basis. Really thinking of yourself as an educator, trying to educate and teach this client something in a way that they're gaining comfort and the confidence to make a really wise decision for their own uh, best interest, right? Mm -hmm. I think that added that breaks down barriers they're able to discuss things more frankly with you they'll share more things that maybe they they would keep uh if they knew you're just a salesperson mm -hmm. so bringing in that education element at least for our audience has been a very important breakdown of the barriers and increases of trust as you mentioned yeah no no I'm absolutely and and I think uh, as you you know as you said in sales if you take that education um, point of view because that's where you can add value because let's face it if I'm engaging with somebody you know a salesperson you know I've probably done some research I probably have a fairly good idea or somewhat of an idea of what I want I want to know what added value they're going to bring to me them personally like uh, or what what have they done with other people what are some creative things um something like that to make me want to engage I agree. And, and there's different strategies we can employ. I always see uh, salespeople that come into education, financial education space, space being great uh, because they're used to talk about reasons, understanding their, their needs and what they're looking to do and, and vice versa. Educators that go into sales are great. Um, it's just, uh, you know, that communication and we can bring in some tools as well from education. So with our, our salespeople, we're always using visual learning cues and follow-up education so that Again, a half hour call, we may not be able to get through everything, but there's ways today to continue to communicate, educate clients so that they're gaining that experience. And, and so uh, the, the big thing in financial services, is people make a decision and they'll wake up in the middle of the night, you know, wondering, hey, did I make the right move? And you get late night emails or late night calls. And by taking that process of educating them, it helps to avoid that because they know why they've made the decision. It's not you telling them they've made the decision for themselves as well. Yeah, and I think that's a really good point that you just made there. It's not you telling them because, I mean, let's face it, that's often the way a lot of financial transactions end up when, especially when the, the people on the consumer side maybe don't understand things. It's the person on the side table going, oh, you made a great decision. This is fantastic. You're going to love this. and But you're not 100% convinced. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that is that's a big thing, and you know, it goes to the the whole picture as well. You mentioned the importance of trust, and I think really trust is starts with online presence, communication. You know, making sure things look professional because the first thing I know you, you likely do, I know I do. Anytime I'm a partner with somebody or be on a podcast, I'm looking them up online, seeing what makes them ticks, just seeing you know yeah. where they're at. You know, with you, it's easy. I see page a page on Google on on trust and, and these great things people are saying. And I think that's where, again, this, this cause-based alignment can really help because when we are affiliating with the cause, they're not just seeing your webpage. They're seeing you featured on maybe that nonprofit you're supporting. They're seeing you featured on maybe something that the local government's doing. Uh, they're seeing this messaging <clears throat> spread on, on these other pieces, not just you saying how good you are about yourself. So I think that online presence is really key rooted um, in, 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 in trust building with those people like us that like to do our due diligence before mm -hmm. we communicate with somebody. Yeah. And I think you alluded to this earlier, but I think it's obviously really important as well. If you're going to align with a cause, number one, it should be a cause that you care about. Um, it should be one that is, you know, somewhat has some alignment with your, with your business and something, something I think 
it should be kind of realistic as well because we often see people people love to put this stuff up on their company site you know like oh we've got this big green massive green initiative and you think yeah that's great but you can't really see any impact from it it all sounds great but it's lovely and esoteric uh so i think i think those are important important pieces is that as you said you're aligned with the cause that you actually have some emotional attachment to it and it's yeah. something that you can actually genuinely make an impact on. Yeah, you've illustrated a, a big point that we try to communicate all the time. We call it authentic participation. Right. Meaning what we see a lot of times is these financial services will front load, hey, I'm involved in financial education. It will be in their sales material, on their website, and all in these places. And then once somebody becomes a client, they don't hear that messaging anymore. So yeah. it's like, is that real? Um, so a lot of what we do is helping people incorporate that brand into, uh, you know, their their process and really make it a, a something they do, whether it be volunteer, guest speak, etc. And so whatever causes may align with your business out there, right? Uh, for the different listeners, it's finding ways you can actually do something and add value. You know, those little photo ops where you're teaching or or or, or serving go a long way. Uh, in addition. I think it's important these days, as we chatted before uh, this uh, podcast, um, you know, the risk involved with aligning with uh, a cause that may not align with values, you know, where 40% of people hate you, 40% of people love you, and 20% don't care. You need to ask yourself, that, will this help my business or should it be something I do on the side on my own and, and keep it quiet? Yeah, no, I think that's a, I, I think that's a really good point because I think there, there, you know, there needs to be a place for, for businesses to basically be able to operate. Maybe they don't, maybe they align to something very benign that most people, you know, will have a decent reaction to. And that's the good route, road to go. As you say, if you're going to align with something that has a distinct audience pro it and a distinct audience against it, then you have to ask yourself, as you said, the question, am I prepared to lose one of these two? And is that good for my business? And is that even good for the cause, to be honest? Very good point. And, you know, I think uh, that's why I enjoy financial education. We never have anybody protesting. Don't teach <laughs> kids about money. It's bad. Don't learn about money. You cancel this guy. We never hear it. So I love it. I, I, I don't like to battle. I will when I when I need to. But it's something that everybody supports. So it's a very easy one to to align with. But uh, yeah, there are some that are, are, are dif you know, difficult to 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 really uh, uh, avoid problematic, mm -hmm. you know, the upset emails or the phone calls, so forth. So, you know, really thinking through and also I think it's important you vet out your partners because they're a reflection of you. So if you find a cause you're really passionate about, you align with this 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 brand and let's say they go off and do something else uh, that that brings your name into it. Yeah. Um, there's a risk there. So, you know, one of the things we always promise our clients is all we care about is financial education. Whatever goes on out there, we're focused on this. We're not going to, you know, risk your brand. And I think that's a conversation you as a business need to have with those nonprofit partners. Are you going to stay in your lane? Are you strictly focused on this cause? What are the risks that you pose to our brand? Um, and, and how will you help us too? So a lot of this cause-based promotions as well is about helping that uh, nonprofit get greater awareness. And a lot of that involves them activating that campaign so they're involved in the promotions they're mm -hmm. getting out there as well to show that alignment with your company so there's really an exchange of, of 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 benefits you're helping each other get the name out there get more awareness more eyeballs hopefully more volunteers and, and support for the nonprofit. and obviously that's building your brand and hopefully helping you acquire clients and build a, a positive image out there in the community yeah, and and I love that. That's a really fascinating point that you just made there about vetting the part, you know, the potential partner or cause properly. Because I do think that's something. It just seems to me that that's something that could be overlooked quite easily. Because maybe you have somebody who, in your company, who you know finds a cause and says, "Oh, this is the one we should do," and everybody goes on the website and says, "Oh, it looks fantastic." Yeah, and next minute you have a partnership, but you don't know how they are interacting with the world you don't know the, the rest of the people involved as you say you don't know what their future plans are so i can see where i, I could see this has probably burnt a few people over the years definitely yeah yeah it has and you know it's just i think open communication is key in any type of relationship business or personal 
um, and just being able to, you know, do a deep dive into due diligence, you know, look up their guide star, see where their money's going, um, you know, look at the directors, you know, look at everybody's uh, socials, um, you know, ask about their marketing um, and also share with the, you know, the vision. Uh, it might be also good to have a conversation with the board. Um, you know, they have nonprofits have to have board meetings mm -hmm. every so often. So yeah. having that conversation, hey, we're really in, impressed by your organization. We want to partner. We just need to make sure of the direction you're going the next two, three, four years, however long you want to, to work with them. What does that look like? What's on the agenda? What's coming up next? And the more you can talk about things, I think the better. Um, and the, the again, the more transparent each party is, the better mm -hmm. the relationship. And I think it's part of that too. It's not just, you know, it's not just you doing your due diligence, but it's also demonstrating to the partner that you're serious about this. Because I think there's there's the there's the other part is because it's because it has become sort of in vogue now to have causes, right? Um, that I, I always try and differentiate between people, you know, organizations that are really committed and doing something as opposed to ones that I just say like stick bumper stickers on their website. Yeah. And so I think on the flip side, as we said, it's good. To, you have to do your due diligence about the cause, but I think you also have to do your internal due diligence and say, are we really committed to this? Are we willing to work? Or is this something we're going to get bored at or we're going to push to the back burner the minute it, it becomes even slightly inconvenient? True, true. And, and having that conversation, you mentioned employees before, I think the more engaged the employees are and the more interest there is too, it could be really uh, not only used for that marketing side, the promotion side, the uh, client relationship side, but also for an internal thing to really bond people together under one same uh, mission and, and cause. And when you're able to volunteer together and do those things, that's great team building, uh, especially when there's a mission and outcome focus uh, that brings something back that everybody's once right for the community yeah. i think that's a added benefit that's uh you mentioned earlier which is great and then some of, and to be honest and then some of these causes where you can where there's good alignment where you know there's good trust where where you can make an impact and all that sometimes they may not be the most uh, shall we say like uh, you know they may not be the coolest things but I really think that the authenticity of doing something with a real organization, a real partnership, a commitment by both sides and able to show the impact of that partnership, that weighs more than how cool the cause is. I definitely agree. It's it's about, you know, and, and you know, part of the job of the company is really to bridge that story gap, right? So why are we supporting them? how it aligns with our vision for the, the community in the future um, and creating that story behind it. And, and we can make even a cause that may not sound super fancy or sexy, even financial literacy doesn't sound too, mm -hmm. too cool. For, for, for instance, um, we can make it sound much cooler when we're focused on, you know, showing them photos of these kids before what they're mm -hmm. saying after, you know, getting the, the, our partners involved on these, photo shoots and different things where we're handing out graduate certificates or, or opening a new center, you know, with the ribbon cutting, um, or we partner with uh, various sports leagues and, and so forth and getting them out there to the games. Um, so there's ways we can even make a, a cause that may not have that, you know, real cool sound, as you said, um, cooler by the, the different things that we're doing to uh, really align with that cause events, uh, tie-ins with marketing, um, bringing other people in that are influencers, etc. So there's some things we can do to spice it up. Yeah, and no, and I, I, and I agree. I mean, I'm a, I'm a big believer as well. Is that um, if you can, what you were just saying there, if you if you financially educate five kids, right? You just made a massive contribution to the world. Those five kids are going to go out, going to know how to manage their money. They're going to have, maybe they're going to advise and help other people. Their families are going to have a knock-on effect. So you have a real tangible. And that's why I always think that those are great things to focus on as opposed to, I'm not knocking it, but if you take some big macro issue and it's like, oh, great. And, you know, maybe you do a fun run to raise money for it. That's great, but you can, but the direct impact, I don't know. I think the impact on the people in your community of the five educated kids is is far greater. Yeah, I agree. There's those high profile things where people just want to slap their logos everywhere, mm -hmm. like more of a sponsorship, right? Where yeah. hey, it's a logo placement on the on the red carpet thing, logo placement there, and there's some really benefits that are just for the people in attendance. Yeah. What we try to do is very uh, uh, large scale campaigns that target a certain area across multiple channels of communication from 
online to to physical interactions to a variety of things that really pull it in and create a life to it right so it's not just having a cause and saying hey you support it it's creating these properties creating these activations and campaigns that, that make it exciting uh, for instance, we just did a, a launch for our United for Financial Literacy. We brought in Kevin O'Leary as a spokesperson oh. to launch that. Yeah, I was really quite surprised he said, yeah, but he did. Um, so that was that was great. Um, so we're trying to bring in those types of things to, you know, increase that exposure in, in uh, as well as, you know, just get it out there to the masses as opposed to just a, a local area. Um, but again, if you're a local business, you want to focus locally, right? If you're a national yeah. business, you, you want to expand that. But. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And like I said, I mean, my advice is like, you know, pick a cause that has an impact and one you care about and you're one that uh, you're willing to put the time and effort into actually being a real partner for. And listen, Vince, this has been fantastic. And all of Vince's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. Yeah, yeah. Here at the National Financial Educators Council, we partner with various organizations to bring financial education programming into communities. As I mentioned, the United for Financial Literacy campaign, that's our effort to bring uh, quality accredited material into uh, every state. That's our goal. We are in every state right now, but we want to increase that scale. So there's really programs that scale within those communities. If anybody has an interest in connecting, you can find me on LinkedIn at Vince Shorb. And uh, it's been a pleasure. I've enjoyed many of your podcasts leading up okay. to this. So uh, always great uh, advice here. And, and really what you're doing is financial education as well. You're educating people on an important area, which is generating income and sales and, and, and you know, being able to spread the message. So I appreciate you from a financial educator standpoint as well. Well, well thank you. <laughs> I appreciate the, the, the compliments. Um, and I and I truly do believe, um, you know, financial, the work you're doing is fantastic. Financial literacy is so important. It's always going to be important. It's becoming more important. So um, yeah. I go, go check it out. If you're looking for partners, I mean, this is a great one to partner with because, as you said, Nobody's going to complain about financial about uh, teaching financial literacy. So it's a great it's a great cause. It has a great impact, and it's about one of the safest ones you could go for. I would agree there, and um, <laughs> yeah, and, and, and you know, it's like I think back to my times going through the struggles of being broke and sleepless nights, yeah. scrounging through couch cushions, wondering if the car is going to break down. Right, all those things. It's like it's more than money; it's life. Um, yeah, and, yeah. Exactly. So I appreciate your, your your support of that. All right. Well, listen, thanks again, Vince. Thank you for watching and listening, and I'll see you all again soon. Thank you. <laughs>